this is Richard from Modern Health Span. We're very pleased to have our second interview with Dr. Harold Katcher. In this series, we will talk about his new book and get an update on his experiments and his company. But first, let me introduce Dr. Katcher. Dr. Harold Katcher is one of the discoverers of the human breast cancer gene, BRCA1, and has thousands of citations in the scientific literature with publications ranging from protein structure to bacteriology, bioinformatics, and biochemistry. And is now the chief scientific officer at Uven Research, a company working on the development of rejuvenation treatments. Dr. Katcher's new book, The Illusion of Knowledge, the paradigm shift in aging research that shows the way to human rejuvenation will be launched on the 4th of September, 2021, and is already available in electronic form. The book launch will take place at the Book Passage in the Ferry Building in San Francisco at 3 p.m. Pacific time. With that, let me start the interview. So Dr. Katcher, you are Chief Scientific Officer of UVAN Research and have just mm. published the book, The Illusion of Knowledge, uh, the paradigm mm. shift in aging research that shows the way to human rejuvenation. So welcome sure. back to Modern Health Span, and it's great to thank see you. you again. And thank, thank you for joining us. Agreed, so, thank you. <laughs> thank you. So, so congratulations on getting your, on finishing your book and getting it published mm -hmm. and the launch set up. I'm sure the launch will be um, very exciting and a, no. and a good the day. Launch, the launch is uh, September 4th on Saturday mm -hmm. at 3 p.m. at uh, Book Passage. There, They have two locations. This is the, the Ferry Building location in downtown San Francisco, so near the uh, piers. Right. So, so it, it, it should be pretty exciting. Right, it should be. I, I would uh, love to be there. So I read the electronic version of your book. It was very interesting, you know, starting from the basics, kind of, and, and really building up the argument for programmed aging, which I found yeah. really, really helpful. So, and it, it seems to have come from reading a paper, like in 2005, that, well, actually, you read it like five years, a few years later, but it was published. Yeah. Four, four years later, I read four it in years 2009. Later. And, I read but, it, please. I did, but you saw something in it that other people didn't, because you apparently, apparently, uh, apparently, <laughs> apparently, much stuff that the authors themselves didn't didn't quite see. Yes, yeah, that, which is amazing. So, for the book, could you briefly describe the book and what is the main message? Okay. Well, most scientists of aging mm. feel, feel that, that aging is a, is a question of the accumulation of damage over time. Mm. And, uh, and um, their approach to, to aging is, is to uh, try to slow down or repair that damage. Mm. Uh, we we see that with just about you know antioxidants to slow down the damage, uh, various drugs uh, elicit uh, repair responses, etc. Uh, mm. You know, for instance, um, uh, rapamycin, for instance. Mm. Uh, interferes in the antagonism between uh, mTOR and and uh, and the FOXO uh, repair uh, factors, transcription factors. Okay, the basic thesis is this: we're composed of cells. Over time, our cells age. And as they age, they lose functionality. And when our cells lose functionality, the tissues that are composed of those cells lose functionality. And when those tissues lose functionality, the organs that are composed of those tissues lose functionality, the organ systems, and then the organism itself. And that's what we call aging. And eventually 
functionality becomes so impaired we die. Mm -hmm. So that's 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 the picture that the overwhelming majority of aging scientists have. To me, the convoy experiment proved one thing. Cells don't age. Yes, if you take cells from an aging body, you'll see they have all the characteristics of aging cells. But if you take those same cells and put them in a young body, you'll see them regain all the characteristics of young cells. And this has been shown over and over again. If the normal, if the normal, the normally accepted theories of aging are correct, you'd expect that old cells placed in a young body would be defective and unable to, to do a heck of a lot. And you'd expect that young cells placed in an old body would be vigorous and healthy and might uh, in fact, you know, do, would certainly do better. Mm. But in fact, the opposite is true. When you put old cells in a young body, they become effective, they become youthful. When you put young cells in an old body, they become defective and old. So the basic thesis is this, aging does not occur at the cellular level. Aging occurs at the systemic level. And furthermore, the signals whether they're either pro-aging or anti-aging in adults, mammals, are carried in the blood and carried by factors more than one. I give people the genetic argument that obviously if there were a single factor that controlled aging, there would be mutations of that factor that would produce immortals and, and people who live for, for five years and died of old age. Of course, we do have progeria. Uh, in any case, so in 2013, I took note of, uh, of the experiments that I had read. I could, I could because in 2009, when I first read the Convoy's paper published in Nature as a Letter, I said, I thought I could cure aging. Uh, I told my family members so, and they probably thought I was crazy. <laughs> but I, I, I tried to find help in every which way. And uh, eventually, to make a long, a very long story short, uh, I found Akshay Sangvi, and the only possibility for me to 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 try to to implement my ideas was to go to India, mm -hmm. and uh, where the NMIMS University is, which is which has an excellent pharmacology department. And that's where I worked for a couple of years. And I'll, again, make a long story short. Um, I tried to implement the ideas I had in my 2013 paper, which we, we called heterochronic uh, parabiosis, in which I would completely replace, or as completely as possible, the, blood, the plasma of an old person with the plasma of a young person and have a schedule of such exchanges such that we might trip the body into being young again or trick it or, or uh, we tried doing this with rats. One of the reasons I chose rats is because they have relatively large uh, veins as say compared to mice, but not large enough. And, and we could not even try and manually we could not do anything like plasma exchange with the rats their veins were just too delicate so in a very last ditch effort, <laughs> in 
when I when I left Mumbai with, for what I thought was probably the last time, it wasn't. Uh, I said, let's try this. And I, I really connected lots and lots of dots. And it's all IP, so I can't really talk about it. Um, I said, let's try this. And I left Shada uh, Khaner to, uh, while I was with her to, to do the injections, I left, I left India and I thought to myself, oh, well, the likelihood of it working is very tiny. And I'm perfectly happy to be back in Salt Lake City. <laughs> Although I certainly love people in India. But, mm. but you know, I'm, I'm, I was in my 70s. <laughs> mm. So it's, it's, things are a little different. Um, and then a week later, I got a call that uh, it worked. That the uh, that the grip strength of the of the old rats had, had improved considerably to towards towards the youthfulness, that the inflammatory cytokines had, had dropped down, and and after a month we sacrificed them. And we found that various levels of things like um, like glutathione had had instead of decreasing as they always do in all living creatures, gone up. To uh, I think after a month it was about seventy percent of adult, uh, of young adult levels when they were started at about thirty percent of young adult levels and it went up after a two month period it went up to ninety something percent of, of adult levels so <clears throat> we used to basically. 30 markers, bioage markers, things that to some aren't even considered bioage markers, or they should be. Things like uh, HDL cholesterol, good cholesterol and bad cholesterol, liver enzymes and kidney functioning, uh, cognitive performance in, in uh, solving mazes, the, the latency, the time it took them to solve a maze. We saw all of these things travel back to, to youthful levels. At the time, I said to myself, this is crazy because I didn't know Steve Horvath from a hole in the wall. And I was about as well known as a hole in the wall. <laughs> Although not quite as common. Um, I was in Mumbai and I wrote to Steve and I said, could we, you, you've made human clocks. You think we could make a rat clock, a spray dolly rat clock. We were using spray dolly rats. It's a brand of rats as they were. Um, and to my great surprise, he said, yes. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> He's, he's a great guy, by the way, um, as well as a great man. <laughs> he's a great person. Right. Um, so we, we contributed lots of tissues from rats of lots of ages, uh, together with, uh, with Rudy Goya, Goya in uh, Argentina. And uh, Steve can constructed a rat clock, which was, was accurate. And uh, later on, by the way, Steve constructed a pan mammal clock from which he can tell the age of any mammal because the basic idea is this, mammal development if you, if you call development growth of complexity, does perhaps stop young adulthood. The development in terms of going through developmental stages with, with, with different phenotypes, even at the cellular level and then the subcellular level, 
And, and since we developed the rat clock, Steve felt he owed us something, of course. <laughs> he spent a lot of money on it. Um, and he took the ages of our treated rats, the epigenetic ages. Hmm. And, and what he found is we had reduced those epigenetic ages by 54%. We had reduced old rats to young adults. And this was on the, not only on the basis of, of the 30 odd uh, physiological and biochemical, et cetera, tests, because this is Steve Horvath's clock, which was, uh, which is gold standard hmm. in, in aging. So apparently we reversed aging even at the cellular level. And to us, it's just a question of reversing, of changing the age phenotype of cells because the cells have many different states. Mm -hmm. We can, they occur at different ages. We can call them age phenotypes because you can, you, but those are, as I said, systemically trolled. Mm -hmm. Every or, organ probably ages at a different rate. We, we know that because we know that the same sorts of cells start the aging process at different rate, at different times and different organs in the same animal. Uh, so well, what can I say? I think, I think mm -hmm. aging is a program that nature installed for the benefit of, of uh, providing the variety and diversity of, of species. I think nature has no concern for us as individuals, but nature, God, if you wish, but, but concern for us as, as, as a race, as it were. And I think, uh, I think things have changed now. I think, I think immortality or immortal youth, or at least greatly extended youth and greatly extended lifespans are in our future. 